Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and finally back with another card for my Valentine series. So I started off with some Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor Paper, and then I'm using this little trick that Jennifer McGuire showed in a recent video, which I thought was brilliant. I'm taking some Press and Seal Cling Wrap, which if you are not familiar with, it just presses onto anything. And I have a, this whole box of it in my craft room and I always forget I have it. But I basically turned it like face down, pressed it, folded it over and pressed it again onto a hard board. And then I'm pressing my watercolor paper onto it so it holds the whole piece. This way I don't have to tape down the edges because I'd already pre-cut this out so that I knew the size I wanted, everything else. So this way it's gonna hold onto this so I can watercolor this entire piece. And I had also pre-cut out um, a heart-shaped image from one of the MFT dies. I have a rough idea of what I was going to do here. <laughs> this was actually my second attempt. My first attempt, I tried using just distress inks and sponging and some masking that, and it just, it was turning out horribly. And even this, I did all this watercoloring. I just used some um, clean color real brush markers and I'm using, I'll have all the colors listed, but I started with light blue and then I went in with cobalt blue. But I did this and I actually, when I was first finished this, I didn't like it. But I walked away, had to go run errands, get the kids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then came back to it later and I was like, no, you know what, I can work with this. So I, all I did was just drew the marker on because I'm creating basically an underwater scene and then just pulling the color out with my little H2O brush um, on the Strathmore Ready Cut, Ready Cut watercolor paper. Um, these blend really well, like they move quite easily. So I left the bottom of the heart blank and then I went in with blush, which is kind of like a sand color, which is what I wanted because I'm kind of creating a little scene in the bottom of the ocean. And then once it's all dry, I sprayed it with my distress sprayer and let that sit for 30 seconds to a minute. And then it reacts with water. So I picked that up with my paper towel and I've just got this kind of splattery, bubbly look to it. And then to continue with that, I grabbed my Copic Opaque White, just any white acrylic paint would technically work or a white gouache. I just really love the Copic Opaque White because it is super, super pigmented and super white and I can water it down like this and it still stays very white. So I just put some on an acrylic block and then mixed it with a little bit of water to thin it out. And then I could have just splattered this right here, but I didn't want to get white splatter all over everything. <laughs> So I put my splatter cubby into place and just did it on there so I can drag the brush across the edge of the acrylic block and create my splatter. And I got some big blobs on there, which I actually wanted. I wanted like blobby, bubbly sort of look going on. So that I set aside to completely dry. And I grabbed another piece of the same watercolor paper and I'm stamping images from the Lawn Fawn Octopi My Heart stamp set, as well as some images from the Mermaid For You stamp set. So I'm stamping them multiple times because I'm going to use a couple on the outside. I wanted to use some on the inside, of course. So I just stamped them until I filled this whole piece. And then I experimented first and I did not like how my first one went. I was trying to blend a couple colors together and I like the pink and the purple and I just did not like how that was turning out. So instead I just stuck to one color. So I started watercoloring in these little images, doing the exact same thing, just using my clean, clean color real brush markers, applying the color and then pulling it out with my water brush. And I'm trying to make sure like sometimes if my water brush does get too wet, I dab it off on some paper towel. I find with this watercolor paper as well and these markers that sometimes the images can like the color can bleed past the stamp lines just because it really likes to move on here. So I try and control the amount of water I'm using. So I colored one of the octopus um, or octopi. I don't know. Uh, one was pink, one was green, and I did a second pink one on a separate piece of paper since that first one turned into a mess. And then I decided to do a little bit of experimenting. So I'm grabbing some of the coral and seaweed images from the Mermaid For You set, and I'm stamping them with just some memento dye inks. And I knew they wouldn't stamp perfectly because I'm stamping on some textured watercolor paper. But what I did is I went over them with the real brush markers just lightly, and then took the water brush and pulled that color on top of the stamped image. And these are dye inks that I stamped with. So they do, they're not um, permanent or water fast. So the colors will move. So I was very careful with how much water I had on my water brush. Um, I think if I got too wet, it'd probably just start smearing and bleeding. But I love how this turned. I've done this before years ago. I can't recall offhand, but I remember doing this and it just adds like a ton of extra definition and some extra color. And it also smooths out the stamping because obviously stamping on textured um, surfaces, most solid images, you're not going to get a perfect image. So I went over everything with that and then I mixed up a bit more of that Copic Opaque White 
And then just use the marble tool to start adding some dots. And then I use my brush to paint on little highlights just to give everything that little bit of extra texture and dimension. Really, really simple. So I'm just picking it up and that's another reason why I love this Copic Opaque White because it's such a thin consistency that it's super easy to add little elements like this and I don't have to fight with it. I just pick it up with my brush and quickly paint it on. So really simple. So once I was finished with all of this extra dots and highlights and whatnot, I made sure that everything was completely dry before I started running it all through my Big Shot with all the coordinating dyes because I have the coordinating dyes for both the Octopi My Heart and the Mermaid For You set, because otherwise I'd be here all day, as it was, this card took me all day, off and on all day between kids and errands and cold weather and all that stuff. So I used the coordinating dies and just taped them into place with a bit of post-it tape and then went back and forth through my die cut machine to die cut all of the pieces. And then I took a piece of white cardstock, slightly smaller than my watercolor piece, and traced out that heart window, and then used that same heart die cut to die cut that. This is kind of a redundant step, it's not necessary, but I wanted this back piece, I wanted the heart to be inlaid in it just to um, eliminate a little bit of the bulk. Since I'm going to turn this into a shaker card, I just, I don't know, I thought it would be a little bit easier. So I just created that window and then inlaid the watercolor heart and then taped it into place with just some scotch tape. And then I started creating my scenes. So I started hearing bits of the coral and the seaweed and some of the other little fun elements, the little... Um, bow and bow tie that I had stamped and die cut so I adhered one as a bow tie to the boy octopus and then I adhered one as just a bow um, in her on her head or whatever for the girl octopus and then those I adhered with foam tape I decided to pop these up again just extra dimension I really went all out with this card I was just having so much fun with it so I did that, set it aside, and then on the front piece I adhered some more seaweed and the rock and whatnot because I didn't have as much space on the inside where um, the heart was. So I adhered those to the outside and the whole time I was doing this I was like, okay, hey, how am I gonna add the sentiment? I dithered between the thought of like stamping it directly onto the front or stamping and embossing on the front and I ended up deciding to just line up the sentiment in a straight line and then I'm gonna stamp it onto a piece of vellum. So I treated the vellum with my anti-static powder tool first and then this sentiment that I, like I said, put on a straight line. This is from the Octopi My Heart stamp set. And I stamped it with Versamark ink onto the vellum and then coated it with some detail white embossing powder and then heated that up with my heat tool until the embossing powder was melted. And being vellum, it heats up really, really quickly. So I always wanna make sure to remove the heat tool the minute the embossing powder is melted. And then I'm going to line this up in my paper trimmer using the little wire guide just so I can see where I'm cutting here to make sure I've got it lined up straight. I'm gonna just trim this off so it's just this thin strip with the sentiment. So then I decided where I was gonna put this. I was like, oh, put it across the top. Should I put it across the middle, etc. Decided to kind of put it across the bottom where this coral was. So I was gonna fold over the edges and as I was doing that, I was realizing I didn't like how it was going over the little pink piece of coral. So I very carefully pulled that off because I used my Tombow Mono Multi to do all this adhering. And this, this adhesive normally will um, tear if you try and pull it apart, but I was just really gentle, like wiggling it off. And then I can wrap um, my vellum around, I'm going to tape it into place, and then just trim off the excess on the back here because you can see it um, through the front. So I'm going to trim that off, and then I can flip this back over and re-adhere um, the coral and whatnot. But before I get to that, I'm going to use a piece of acetate that I trimmed to just slightly smaller than this piece. And I'm just using my um, Xyron tape runner. I'm just running that all along the inside and also running it right up to the edges of the heart to make sure that this is going to be adhered really nice and flat to the back of this. So applied all that adhesive and then pressed that acetate down onto it. So then I've got my window created. And now I can flip it over, re-adhere that little pink coral. I'm just going to adhere it slightly over that little strip of vellum. And then another one of those little hearts. I just thought that would be cute to add that right after the sentiment that you occupy my heart. So added a little more adhesive and then press that into place. So now we're getting into the actual shaker element. And this is why I went into so much work like inlaying the hearts and everything because I wanted to create the shaker on the base rather than fiddling around and flipping things over and trying to line things up. I found this was going to be the easiest. So I already had scraps of the foam tape that I cut down and doubled up. So I have two layers of foam tape here. 
and I remove the backing paper and that makes it a lot more pliable and easier to manipulate. So this way I can go all around um, the perimeter of the heart. I didn't worry about jutting it right up next to it. I didn't think that was necessary. So I'm just going around and completely coating that and then adding double layers everywhere else. And then I decided to add a third layer, which I almost never do because that makes for a really bulky card. But I thought for something like this, it would be kind of perfect. Also because I had adhered those little, um, both little octopus with foam tape. So those are already popped up again. So I wanted there to be extra space. So I trimmed down a third piece of foam tape. So now I have it stacked three times. So I went all around that heart again for the third layer and then added a third layer to all the other pieces and was really generous with the foam tape because I don't want it flattening anywhere else. Plus I want everything like super well adhered. So I've got all my foam tape in place and then I grabbed some Studio Katya sequins. These are the crystal clear fusion ones that I love. They're so gorgeous. Just, yeah, the colors they pick up are so pretty, more of like a blue tone, so I thought that'd be perfect for this. So I added some to the bottom for the shaker, but I also adhered some up above the octopus and that just so that they wouldn't, everything wouldn't just fall to the bottom. So I just adhered those into place with little dabs of my multi-medium matte adhesive. And then once I had, you know, those few little sequins adhered and the rest just sitting in the bottom, I also added these little tiny pink micro beads from Studio Katya as well. I just thought those, you know, played off the pink. So I didn't add very much, just a few. I just picked them up with my fingers and just sprinkled a few in there. It's more to give it that shaker noise you know, and that little bit of color. So I didn't overfill this because I didn't want it completely covering all the other little elements I adhered. And now I can line up the front piece and easily adhere it over top. I didn't have to flip anything over, fiddle with it in that way. And I've got my card front almost completely created. So really fun. And of course I was like playing with it, like shaking it around and stuff because that's just the funnest part. So once I was done with all that, I'm gonna get to my card base which is some heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches. And I scored it at five and a half. So this will be a top folding A2 size card. And I just adhered those extra elements that I had stamped and colored earlier to create another little like finishing scene on the inside of my card. That finished off the inside. And I'm gonna use my Tombow Mono Multi to adhere the card front, the shaker element to the card base. And I purposely chose the multi for this because it gave me a few seconds to adjust and make sure this was lined up into the center of my card base. And then as a final, final touch, <laughs> I grabbed my Tonic Nouveau Crystal Drops. These are the white blizzard crystal drops. I thought these are glitter drops. Sorry, these are the glitter drops. I just thought this would be kind of fun. So I just went in and added them kind of randomly all over this piece here to create more bubbles as it were. So just a fun little extra element on a kind of busy, but really, really fun card. So that finished off my card. It shakes and makes noise and it's just super cute and I love it. So as always, there will be links below the video to my blog post with links to all of the supplies used. Um, check that out below if you are interested. Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really, really appreciate the support and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.